What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about Scream 7 in this video here today. So we got some casting news from one of the biggest reputable sources you could get, Big Screen Leaks, who has revealed that Celeste O'Connor is in talks to join Scream 7. Shout out to you also, as for tagging me in the tweet that you tagged me in. I did see that. Uh, so shout out to you. Shout out to Big Screen Leaks for this scoop today. It says the group of potential Ghostface victims just got bigger with the latest edition already familiar with surviving killers. Sources tell One Take News that Celeste O'Connor, who starred in this year's Madam Web, is in talks to join Scream 7. No word on their role just yet. O'Connor joins an ensemble cast that includes Nev Campbell returning to the franchise as Sidney Prescott after missing the last film due to pay disputes. 1883 actress Isabel May will play Sidney's daughter, rumored to be named after her mother's best friend Tatum Riley, played play by Rose McGowan in the 1996 original. Spyglass and Paramount had no comment on the casting at the time of this article going up. We will update this should things change. O'Connor is no stranger to the genre. In 2020, they starred alongside Catherine Newton and Vince Vaughn in Freaky, which I love Freaky, which released to critically acclaim and is looked back upon as one of the best slashers of the 2020s, because it was. They also starred in the most recent Ghostbuster movies and Madam Web. A return to horror would be very welcome to O'Connor, who's delivered some top-notch acting in the genre. Celeste O'Connor is the most excited announcement Scream 7 has given us so far. Nev and Courtney, at this point, they're just expected talents, so their, their return announcements don't move me as much as stuff like this. Celeste did a great job in Freaky and did what she could with the train wreck that was Madam Web. No offense to the fans out there. I'm certain I'll have some comments down below telling me how Madam Web was this great, spectacular thing. No, it wasn't. She's either going to be playing the heartbreaker character named Chelsea, I believe, or then there's that rich girl who I did a theory about, the queen bee of the group, Holly, both of which would be friends of Taylor. I personally see her being a queen bee. I think she could pull that off. I'm sure she'll do well in whatever role it is. She could be a character we don't know about. I'm just going off of what Daniel RPK has shared with us in the past. We know that Taylor has friends, Chelsea and Holly, one of which described as a heartbreaker, the other one described as like an Allison De Laurentiis type of queen bee, the rich girl. So no shade to Isabel May. I just am only familiar with her brief work and what I saw during that Yellowstone spinoff titled 1883. Celeste is definitely getting the most exciting casting so far. So I hope she does a great job in the film. And as expected, it would appear they are staying cheap with the casting. Celeste isn't a big star by any means. And Spyglass more than likely gave Nev, Courtney, presumably Patrick, more than they should have and now they will be giving everyone else leftovers the narrative that they are only casting white folks also at this point doesn't hold up anymore i mean to be quite honest with you guys i don't know why y'all thought hollywood would just cast white folks these days anyway they were not just going to cast white people all they do is pander to us minorities they were going to give us somebody they were going to give us somebody all they do in hollywood is pander to minorities they were going to give us somebody <laughs> So they were 100% intended on casting someone of color, just like they have with all of the past Scream movies. We've had at least one. We haven't had as many as we did with Scream 5 and 6, but yes, we've had people of color all throughout the Scream franchise. It just is what it is. It's been a thing ever since the first Scream, so it's not too shocking. I never expected this cast to be all white. <laughs> but as far as another thing I want to discuss with you all, I just wanted to spitball really quick about a topic that many people probably won't engage with. This is just for people that want to engage with it as a possibility. I don't want to see it, but I want to theorize on it and hear from you all how you would want to do this. Nev Campbell has gone on record to state that she would never want to play Sidney Prescott dying on screen. And with a comment like that, I think it'd be safe to say the biggest curveball we could actually get in Scream 7 is for them to do the unthinkable and kill Sidney Prescott on screen with Nev Campbell somehow, not somehow, but, but with Nev Campbell herself actually being present to bring that to life. Doing a complete 360 from the comment she made all that while ago, talking about how she feels like it would be a betrayal or something along those lines to the character. But in reality, there is a way that could satisfy thousands of fans of the franchise even if I come out on the, on the other side thinking it, it, it wasn't what I would do with the character. If you can execute it in a certain type of way, I'd be at peace with it. So I want to hear from you all. How would you go about killing such a beloved character, Sidney Prescott? I think the most appropriate way to go about this would be to have her dying, saving her children. Yes, it's formulaic. Yes, it's cliched. But I would prefer to see her go out in a blaze of glory as a hero as a mother 
as opposed to Ghostface getting the best of her and she dies like that. No, I wouldn't want to see that. I'd want to see her take Ghostface down with her. I'd want to see something like that. Similar to what I know people wanted to see between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode during the recent Blumhouse Halloween trilogy. How would you kill Sidney Prescott? I think there is a, an effective way to do it that people would be saddened about, but still we would look back and say, you know what? I wouldn't have done that if I was in the writer's room, but this is what you guys did. You guys decided to do the unthinkable and the unthinkable wasn't that bad. And I, again, am only speaking to those who actually want to engage with this in a healthy capacity, not those who want to just say, oh, well, that will never happen. That should never happen. I agree. It should never happen. But the fact of the matter is with Nev making a comment like that, that would be the biggest curveball for them to do that in Scream 7, killing off one of the best final girls that have ever been brought into the horror genre. So how would you do that? How would you go about making Sidney Prescott or giving her an exit from the franchise I personally would do it in her in a way that it revolves around her saving her teenage daughter. And you could say, yes, that's another passing of the torch moment. In this case, you definitely are 100 percent passing the torch because your ass won't be back to pick it up anymore because you're dead. You cease to exist. Would you go as far to not only kill her? Would you kill Gail? Would you kill all of the legacy stars returning? And, well, like Kincaid, I wouldn't count him as a legacy star. Yeah, I don't count Kincaid. But would you go as far as to even kill all three of them and just leave her children and Taylor's friend group standing? What would you do in terms of giving Sidney Prescott an exit? How would you go about it? Would you include Gail in the process? Or would you just have her getting the best of Ghostface and her and Ghostface dying together while she's protecting Taylor or whatever daughter it is? Because I'm sure she has more than one present in this film. Let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.